So it's, it's very interesting how AI is um, going to support the creative writer and the creative process. But I'm going to ask a final question which almost all of us have been asking. Will AI replace you as a creative writer? And I ask the additional question, can it replace you? Udu, okay. Okay. We lean down, down to the floor, floor from here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes, I can. Okay, that's great. Um, I have just very little to say this evening um, in terms of telling you about AI. You already know of artificial intelligence and um, its role in um, creative writing. Um, it's not been much documented, but it's also something that there's a lot available out there in terms of how you can use it. But I will quickly say that AI itself is not new, at least as far as we've been hearing of AI more like from 2023, but um, even though it has become more popular from 2022, um, AI is not, the, the, what we have today as AI that we all talk about is actually generative AI. Um, before, before the advent of um, the generative AI as we see it, we've had um, Google Maps. It's artificial intelligence where machine learning is doing the work for you. The machines are gathering data. They are gathering massive amounts of data, like how traffic um, has moved, the ways people behave in traffic. They've gathered all of those to be able to predict for you that there's going to be a holdup uh, at the city gate. There's going to be a hold up at AYA. All that that you used to have predicting stuff for you was really because of AI, artificial intelligence. Um, when you have Facebook, many of us do not know, for example, that Facebook, the Facebook you use and the Facebook I use are actually different things. Because what Facebook is showing you at any given time depends on the things you have told Facebook. Sorry, if you, if you are not speaking, could you mute your microphone? Um, I'm having to do that work together now because somehow I am the only host. Okay, so when you when you have uh, Facebook already showing you stuff that you should be interested in because you watched similar stuff the day before is actually art artificial intelligence doing that for you and some of you here might have been um, using sites like a uh, poem hunter if you use a site like poem hunter I, I have an account on poemhunter.com and you see that it can automatically generate the audio version of your poem, the poem that you posted there in text. It can just read it for you. It can even translate it into another language in voice. So you posted just a poem in English, but you can have the Spanish version of it in audio and the English version. So AI has been there. Um, but generative AI is what has caught our fancy and maybe that's really the reason we're here today. Um, so, I'm going to just look at the stages in creative writing where we can use 
um, generative AI. Um, and I'm trying to go through this a bit quickly because I know many people do not have access to electricity at the moment and everywhere is so hot. So I will try to just tell you about five, I mean, uh, seven stages. Um, I have used them these ways and I just felt I should share how I use them. If we have time, I can demonstrate some of the platforms for you. Um, if we are professional writers, what makes us professional is our ability to be able to do what we do consistently and more quickly, you know, than we used to do them. So if you are a doctor, it's not only when you are inspired to treat a patient that you, you treat. So you put things around you to ensure that you are at your professional best at every point. So this is where use of AI at various stages are important. So I'm talking about the stages of like researching, uh, creating titles for your work, creating characters and developing those characters, plotting the stories, writing the stories if you want to go that route, and then editing them, uh, plagiarism checks, you know, to be sure you're not copying someone's work, um, graphic design, um, illustration. So I've tried to share the tools I use at the different um, stages and if time doesn't allow us, I've put the websites uh, that I use. You can create accounts on them. They are free. Uh, most of you already use Canva. If you notice, Canva has done a lot of AI introductions nowadays. So at the stage of researching what to write about, um, because it's generative AI, I think that sometimes combining um, Google, Google has a platform called, called Gemini now um, that is a competitor to ChatGPT. Uh, you can check there. If you Google an item, Google gives you literally just what people have already posted on the internet. Now that's fine. When you have, you know, gathered all of that, it gives you factual names, it gives you factual information as much as possible. So whatever you have on Google is what people have posted. But what generative AI does is that it's now assembling all of those stuff and then beginning to disassemble and reassemble them the same way a creative mind does. So at the stage of researching, what um, we've done with my team in, in, in our organization is that we've used it for brainstorming. So we can brainstorm new names, new titles, new new ways things can combine. So at that research phase uh, in creative writing, you just want to explore what are the possible ways. Can I take Okonkwo in Things Fall Apart and try to explore Okonkwo as head of the EFCC in, in current day Nigeria? What kind of personality would that be? So I describe Okonkwo as I lift it from things fall apart and then I put him in a scenario and say Okonkwo uh, is now the central bank governor. That person with mud houses, with two wives or whatever and all of that, all of a sudden is your central bank governor. How is that person going to be? I don't have an idea how it's going to be, but these are the kind of challenges I throw before um, generative AI to see what are the possible options I'm going to see. I, uh, in generating titles too, I do the same uh, assignment. There's a, a platform I use called writer.com. Uh, writer is R-Y-T-R 
if you are making notes um, I didn't put that on the screen but I just remembered it now RYTR you can ask it to generate different combinations different brand names different titles for a certain uh, idea you are talking about you are thinking about now this same thing this same exercise you can use it for character creation and developing those characters um, the backstories of your characters so sometimes when you are trying to do like a script or a, a movie script you need to do a lot of things very fast but instead of going into plagiarism what you are doing with generative AI is place scenarios before it and let it help you think up several permutations of how a character can be so this character even though he's going to play in a current day Nigeria the character is in a keke he's trying to um, he's trying to buy fuel in a jerry can but what's the what's the what are the possible backstories of this young man who is looking for fuel is he somebody whose father just died last week and he's still looking for money to bury is he one guy with a tribal mark that was inflicted on him by one babalao in the village sometime past what are the possible backstories and these are the things you can do with uh, generative ai um, at the writing stroke editing phase um, i tell you some people some people used to ask me how i was i used to write for a newspaper called nature news it's about nature and i write every thursday to submit on fridays and people didn't know that i was using voice to write so you can be in a car everything i'm talking about i'm saying now google voice typing or other voice typing voice recognition tools can just be typing them all so i can be in a car and finish the main crux of my article by just speaking to my phone which is actually what i i was always doing i just speak to it the beauty in that process is that so long as they are english words mostly you are going to have the spellings correct you're not going to be in doubt uh, how to spell it because AI is going to properly write them as it hears them in a few instances um, when you say pour it can spell it as pour in terms of pouring water it can spell it as pour in terms of maybe being destitute without money but those are the mistakes you now when you get back home or get back to a more comfortable environment as a writer you can then sit down and revise uh, i recall one of the years when the nigeria prize for literature was not awarded because the finalists were the works were um they were full of errors grammatical errors spelling errors and these are things you can avoid if you use AI and I recommend that you look at things like Grammarly uh, and some other tools that can help you in uh, plagiarism check uh, or grammar check then um, platforms like uh, Canva Canva can help you in graphic designs so if you are trying to send a book to uh, on Amazon.com, you know you want to sell a book online, an ebook, you no longer need to go to a business center like we used to do, and go to see somebody who could use Corel Draw and all of that before you are able to lay out your book. In fact, with a platform like Designer, Designer, you just only need to put the Microsoft Word document and it designs and lays out the pages in possible different possible ways that 
you 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 can think of and you use that um the almost the final stage is the stage of illustration and we can use ai generated drawings from platforms like uh, mid journey playground playground.ai is one platform i use to generate any image i want and so as a creative writer you can have a full bouquet of your publication done all through um, the uh, support of ai and if you want to do audio alongside you can uh, use other platforms like nature voice uh, nature voice will read any text in most of the major languages for you and you, you just download the mp3 and add them to your publication so let me go to because i have only five slides and this is the fourth one this is a um, the new levels that generative AI can uh, take us to, you know, we are now having like uh, Sora. Sora is a new platform by the owners of ChatGPT, that is OpenAI. In Sora, they have gone to real photorealistic images just by typing text. You say to Sora, um, a, a man dancing by beggar roundabouts so it's, it's very interesting how ai is um, going to support the creative writer and the creative process but i'm going to ask a final question which almost all of us have been asking will ai replace you as a creative writer and i ask the additional question can it replace you and if you are worried, my response is that you then have to remember that digital photography did not replace Studio 24. Studio 24 and many photo studios till today are in business. What did they do? How can we learn from them? If you go to every wedding, everybody still has a, a, a phone, an iPhone, a, an Android phone, a 20,000 naira phone, a 50,000 naira phone, all recording, all shooting videos, clean quality videos. But why has it not replaced? Why is it that we are having more branches of Studio 24? We have five of them also in Abuja. We have five in um, Port Harcourt. We have about total of 24 Studio 24 studios in Nigeria, and they are spread across. Uh, Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, Enugu, uh, Kad Kaduna and all of that. So if the rise of digital photography did not stop a business that started before digital photography, what can we learn from that? I know that of course Phototech and all those ones that were companies that were printing that their business model relied only on printing hard copy photos they ran down quite all right but also because their model remained static but i keep as i keep challenging us those of us who are worried that uh, ai is going to replace what we do as creative writers i say most likely we are not doing enough we are we are being lazy and that's why ai can replace us but if you are able to go to your villages if you are able to um go and i mean like some of us who are working like aquaria tv we are doing historical stuff we are doing um, art and creative writing we're doing uh, development stories it's not easy for AI to replace us AI can only be an enhancer of what we do so if we if you are writing if you are a creative writer whose stories are so maybe your plots are so basic 
that AI can just create those plots, then you have a cost to worry and you need to um, upscale your skills. But if there are some complex plots that we all know is not possible to generate them at least so far with AI. If you are one of those that does good character development, if you are one of those that does very good plots, it's quite unlikely that you will just be replaced by artificial intelligence. Um, Playground allows you to create images so you, it, it's available on playground.com so if I want um, a, an African boy dancing on water as an example if I click on generate it's going to take just a few minutes and it will give you um, it will give you a high quality photorealistic image can you see what it generated yes i yeah, can see. see yeah wow can anybody see my screen yes i can see okay yeah wow this hmm. is in wonderful just a few seconds not up to a minute so now as a creative writer uh, even for those of you who are leaders of the association can we post can we generate a certain image throw it on our whatsapp platform and ask for a poetry competition for that day around that image can we post on our facebook page this image and ask it to to uh, ask people to engage with it you know as just a simple thing um, if I'm not satisfied with that I can still say it should generate the same prompt I can ask it to generate another one can anybody see this yes I can ask Now, if I still want it to expand the prompt, I can click that it should expand the prompt. So I've just told it that it should give me an image of an African boy dancing on water. But when you enable that it should expand the prompt, it can add other things to make that, to improve that thing you have told it to do. And you can add some filters here or different styles if I click on this I can make it a cartoon style make different forms of it so if I choose cartoon style just to tell you about playground.ai you can you can use that to generate images you can tell it which kinds of images it should not use. You can put, you can input some existing images to serve as guide. So if I have to put somebody in that wears maybe a Nigerian color, I can put the Nigerian flag in as a guide and inspiration to AI that whoever it's creating for me should maybe wear this kind of um, color or carry this kind of flag I can do all of that to, to guide it so this is why this thing is called generative AI it's it's creating something new from what you already have the regular AI only aggregates the things you already have to just make sense almost just to analyze it for you so the AI on Google Maps knows that there are plenty of people heading towards Bega and they were moving at 100 kilometers per hour but we noticed that they are now moving at 
10 kilometers per hour it can tell you that okay this means there's a hold up because all these cars that were moving now are moving slowly the cars that were moving at high speed are suddenly moving slowly it can analyze that and say ah, i think there's a hold up that's what the ai at those levels were doing and then uh, ai at the levels of uh, facebook and uh, all those social media platforms were just using the things you were watching and the things you are no longer watching to guess the kind of things you should watch if you go on youtube youtube suggests videos for you they were those algorithms were mostly ai that we had been experiencing for maybe over 10 years uh, poe.com now this one is one of those uh, mega ai platforms that is is using even this playground where we came from now is one of the platforms that Foy can create chatbots to, to do things for you from so you can you if you decide to explore the bots that it has if you want a bot that is for image generation is here if you want a, a bot that is for role play you know like if i click on role play bots there are many people that are creating different bots uh, bots are online robots that are doing things for you so so um look at someone has created one say you are the new roommate to sheji he always loves teasing and being mean to people that's why other of his past roommates ended up leaving because of him but on the other hand, you never knew anything about. If you click on Shaji 12 now, if you if you you can chat with it, it can behave like you are one of his roommates, and the kind of responses it can be giving you are responses based on the character that is portrayed here. So if I want. Um, a certain kind of conversation to uh, transpire. I can come to role play bots. For example, she secretly has a crush on you. That's Bully Millie. If I want to work on a character and I need a conversation around a character that is having a crush on another character, I can go and chat with uh, bully mealy just to have an idea of how that conversation can flow i may not copy it verbatim but these are inspirations for me on how to portray that character that's in character development now if you look at your crush he's your crush he's in your class and he's one of the popular guys many girls like him and he doesn't really know you if you go and engage with this bot Again, it will behave like that. Um, if you go on writing, there are bots, uh, academic writer bot. He's your personal research assistant that will help you write great academic texts. So for those of you that are into academic writing, if you are within POE, you come to academic writer bot and tell it to write academic writings in your area it's you you input documents you input uh, information but it will argue it like an academic writer now creative writer 10,000 it helps you with creative writing so there are many 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 more of humanizer AI is a bot that humanizes anything you give it like essays blogs and all of that um, different types of um, writing points uh, summarize points it summarizes anything in bullet points with the topic um, okay now that I I want to share with you another tool I use um, 
this is one tool you, you will like tinywow.com tinywow.com is a complete free website that you can use to do so many things a AI writing uh, image tools video tools but one of the ways I use um, I use a tiny wow a lot is um, if you give me a two hour YouTube video just I come to tiny wow one of its app is YouTube to YouTube summarize it has YouTube summarize it has YouTube to text you just um, so if you have an image that has text um, it can copy the text from your image for you it can compress PDF a lot of things but if I say if I search one of its app YouTube to text so I search for it this is it if if I want it to uh, tell me stepwise it will give me uh, timelines what was said in each part of the YouTube video if I go to the one that is called um, YouTube to YouTube summarizer YouTube summarizer it will it will summarize every any YouTube to just tell again for this I use this for research so if you have a if you are trying to learn maybe how uh, an engine a car engine how the car enters the ignition to start up and all of that but you have a one hour video that describes how it works but you need to quickly just understand it and maybe write about it quickly I copy all of the link to that video and then come to YouTube summarizer and then paste it I say it should give me a summary of this um, YouTube video it's going to do that for me in just a few seconds to listen to that video that two hour video it will do that in maybe one minute or two minutes it's going to scan through that video and tell me that this looks like it was a conversation between this person and this person and this person seems to argue this way and the other person seems to stand on this other point it does all of that for me and really allows me to be able to write and do what I need to do if I need to watch this video then I can watch it but if I don't need to watch it then it doesn't contain what I am looking for so for those of you who are trying to research who are trying to uh, brainstorm uh, summarize YouTube and uh, YouTube to text are features you will find inside tinywow.com that will be of great use so in summary what I am trying to portray is that AI should not replace you AI should speed up how professional um, should increase it, your chances of being a professional and like I tried to define at the beginning if you are a professional you don't just rely on when I'm inspired when I'm in the mood that's that's more like an amateur a hobbyist who just uh, anytime I'm inspired that's when I write anytime I'm inspired when I'm in the mood that's when I do this but if you're a professional it means that anytime you are called upon you have a vast network of experiences you have a vast network of tools that enable you to be even if you're not the best you are above average of who you can be at every point and this is what AI gives you the opportunity to do 
AI gives you the opportunity to, when you are called upon at short notice, without plagiarizing, without um, doing something unethical, you are able to create something that works and you are able to use that to advance on um, the course that we are on as creative writers and also advance the things you can do. For those who feel guilty using AI, I say it's either you are using AI what I would call the wrong way, which is that you're just waiting for AI to do everything for you. Or, okay, let me even share uh, chat GPT, something I did last night. Um, um, so when heat, the heat was so much last night, I, I wrote a story because exactly how I was feeling. I just decided to start writing it. And then I copied it and brought it to chat GPT and asked it to, to, to write it, to, to rewrite it. And I got something entirely different. Uh, let me read it for you. But this is not the chat GPT one yet. Can you hear me? Can you? Yes, oh, okay. Yes, sir. So I yes. said the air stands still. It is an assembly of subdued and subservient citizens cowered by the heat. I, I mean, I looked through the window and I saw the moon. So I said the moon hangs there. Uh, okay, there is supposed to be T H E R um, E R E. Um, the moon hangs Hello, there in the sky like the British. United Nations. Good evening, is keeping Good evening the everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Who is this now? Who is this now? Please go on, sir. Please go on, sir. Okay. So, um, so I decided to write this the moon hangs there in the sky like the united nations peacekeeping force unable to do anything against this carnage nepal looks away unable to provide any succor the generators in the horizon from big men act like superpowers when their fellow superpowers are the criminals plundering other weak nations they are loud but they do not address the injustice the carnage the miscarriage of justice whatever is left of her. I sit here dripping all my life out. I stare at the bedroom and through the window at the neighbor's window. Oh, such hopelessness. Even water in the shower is boiling. I don't know how a heat stroke feels or when it creeps in or how it rides into a human body, whether it is by Keke or a 160 million naira SUV but I'm thinking of him right now. Heat stroke. I like his surname. He sounds like an expert at what he does. It's like someone whose surname you would expect to hear as a keynote speaker at an international conference titled Six Million Ways to Die. Here is one. With a surname like Stroke, he should be the only speaker. But he can't be anymore. He definitely has, has other competitors now, Professor Boko Haram, Dr. Ban Dietz, and his academic associate, Kidden Upper, would really speak with loads of experience. The, mod, this, the, the, the conversation moderated by Exchange 8, who is an expert on the dollar, Six million ways to die, here is one, 2024, promises to be a big one, especially in view of the interest of international award-winning economist, Mr. Fuel Price. Anyway, all that says nothing about how to get me out of this bakery in which I am locked. Um, so I wrote that in about 15 minutes. Then when I got tired, I brought it from my notepad and I, I 
gave a command to chat GPT. I said, complete the following short fiction. And then I told it how the short fiction should be. It should be with humor. Because th this is how you give the command. You, you, you give the command to chat GPT. How, if you want it to be a, uh, an academic writing or a formal language, that bracket you put at the end of the instruction is very important to tell it how it should do it. So when I put it there, it took from where I said, the last part where I say how to get me out of this bakery in which I am locked. And then look at what it created. And of course it did this in just a 30 seconds or so. I am stuck in this bakery, sweating like I'm in a sauna. The heat outside is so intense that even the oven in this bakery is jealous. I contemplate my life choices. How did I end up locked in a bakery during the heat wave? Perhaps it's my punishment for making too many bread puns in public. As I scan the room for an escape route, I notice a bag of flour. Suddenly, a brilliant idea forms in my mind. I decide to camouflage myself as a giant flour sack with strategic sprinkles of flour on my face and makeshift flour bag costume. I look like the ghost of a failed baking experiment. I make my move towards the exit, blending in perfectly with the bakery surroundings. As I approach the door, I hear voices outside. It's the Flour Liberation Front a secret organization fighting against the tyranny of baked goods. They mistake me for one of their own and welcome me with open arms. In the coolness of their secret lair, we plot our next move, a daring mission to... Anyway, so you can see how it has taken my own creativity and has created something with it. Now, if I decide to build upon what it has written, it can be a very good story. But if you just were, if you were the type who would just come and just say, Chat GPT, write me a story, you will easily fall for plagiarism. There's a lawyer in the US last year that uh, was almost stripped of his uh, many years of practice. Or practice license because ChatGPT, because it's generative AI, it created uh, it created things that did not exist. It created cases that did not exist. Um, it, there's a judge in um, in Brazil that used ChatGPT to write his uh, judgment, and it cited cases that were non-existent as the basis for the judgment it was making. So please don't approach uh, AI by allowing it to dictate and then generate things for you. That's an unethical way and a dangerous way because it might pick up something that actually belongs to someone else and use that to create something that looks like that one. Or it can create something that totally does not exist and put you in trouble. So. I think I should stop there because again we, we have heard again that we have 10 more minutes to go. So let me stop here and take questions before our phones start to complain. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll drop two I'll questions on the chat. The chat. Okay. Please. Okay. Two questions. Okay, Chioma. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Does AI protect the content I feed it with or is it open for public use? If you, if you don't decide to put it up for public use, it, it doesn't display it publicly. Um, like, um, so I have Poe. If you go on Poe, which I was demonstrating earlier, uh, many of you already know that I work in the area of development communication and I have a lot of books, uh, a lot of PDF books around development communication. So I created a chatbot 
called um, um, where is my chat box? Anyway, but the, the Poi is even so. My the way Poi is con constructed is that I can upload all the books and then start engaging with them and researching from the development communication books I have. So I can put that out and say people should use it and I should be paid for it. And I can get paid when people, if you are interested in development communication and you go and use my chat bot because I have put in all the PDF books I have, you can, you can use it and Poi will pay me because I'm drawing people to come and subscribe to their platform. So it's almost like YouTube paying you. But if I choose not to put it out publicly and it's just for my personal use, I can create that chatbot and only be researching my development communication stuff all alone without people getting access to it. Yeah, you asked again also about content rights. Um, if you use it the way we are talking about, you often will not be plagiarizing anyone, which is, so I go, let's say, for example, I go to my village in Akwea land, I watch a masquerade, I write exactly how I have seen it, everything I, and then I bring the writing to chat GPT and say, it should help me rewrite what I have written. It's going to rewrite for me, and I'm not plagiarizing anyone, I don't plagiarize. But if you just say, write about Akwea land or Grinye dance in Akwea, you are going to most likely see it using other people's words. That's the little I know from my end about how to avoid plagiarism in the use of AI. All right, thank you so much, uh, Chief Facilitator. Uh, the Valentine. Uh, I want to say a very big thank you to our guest speaker, Mr. Udu Kinyeru Diego, for taking our time to really uh, on us this evening. The content are uh, really rich, insightful, and I have also learned a lot. In fact, I've just been taking note, and I believe a lot of persons too have also learned a lot this evening. And uh, like, um, Assistant Secretary have said we will continue the discussion up on the platform and please also keep your doors open as we might possibly call you some other time to draw from the world of knowledge. So thank you so much. Really appreciate this and pray that, that may welcome. God refill your wisdom as well for thank this great you. sacrifice you have done. Thank you so much. Thank you.